record here. Hello, Lewis. Hello, Steve. How are you? Good evening. Good evening. Okay. Good evening. Hey. Good evening. Good evening. Today's we're almost we're almost there. It's almost there, right? Thirty percent of shots uh, behind us so far. Uh, there's two thousand seven hundred eleven, and we did about seven hundred ninety lot. So hang oh, in there. Sure. Amazing. Um, today is probably one of the most fascinating uh, Gemaras. So uh, so stay tuned. Uh, it's uh, it's what the Gemara uh, talks about the Malachamavis. And uh, it's probably quite interesting and uh, it's good knowledge. Um, okay, hold on. Okay. It's interesting that we learned yesterday regarding the Gemara that they made everybody, uh, the funerals used to cost a fortune. And the, until Rabbi Gamliel, uh, it got so out of hand that people, we learned last yesterday that people would die and the family would leave the corpse in the street because the, the funeral expenses were so costly. Uh, people would buy fancy clothing and fancy coffins and make nice uh, funerals. So they, uh, they, uh, they, they made a rule, uh, Rabbi Gamli made a rule that you can't buy anything but a little, the most cheapest item for a person that passes on. Uh, it's it, that that idea of like the, the how they would dress people up is probably from like Mitzrayim, like because in Mitzrayim uh, they believe so much in the afterlife that the, the if if you study the the what the contents of those pyramids and the, how they would you know have those uh, pharaohs uh, full of beautiful clothing to, to take with them to the afterlife, they somehow this made it into the Jewish world until it got so out of hand, and then they stopped it. So it's funny, funny, funny Mishnah we learned. Okay, we're starting from Daf. Da, today's Daf is Daf Chof Ches, and we're starting Chav Zayin Omid Beis about uh, about twelve lines from the top, basically. Mishnah says on Ein Manichin Es Hamito Barchov that we learned that certainly you're not allowed to give a hespid on Chalamoid, right? But for Talmud Chacham, you're allowed to give a hespid on Chalamoid. So the Gemara says, Amra Papa, Rab Papa said, Ein Moed Bifnei Talmud Chacham. The, the concept of Chalamoid doesn't exist for a Talmud Chacham. That means somebody who's a Talmud Chacham uh, who dies, you give him a full Leviah with hespedim on chalamoid, not so extensive, but but you do go, do hespedim as opposed to a regular person. The Kolshkain and certainly Hanukkah Purim, if they pass away in Hanukkah Purim, which there is also a prohibition for, for saying hespedim, you say hespedim for a Talmud Chacham that dies in Hanukkah Purim. Mahani means the only if it's the if you're at the funeral of a Shloy Bafonov, if you're just having a get together and he's the dead. Uh, uh, body is not in present, loy, then you don't make a spadem because it's chalamoid or it's Hanukkah and Purim. So the Gemara says, Aini, but it's not true. Voha Rav Kahana, Rav Kahana, Safte le Ravziv, he gave a hespid, a eulogy for Ravzvid, Minhardoi. Ravzvid lived in Nahardoi, and Rav Kahana lived in Pum Nahara. Rav Kahana lived in Pum Nahara far away. So the day Ravzvid died, Rav Kahana was giving a hespid uh, on Ravzvid, although the Ravzvid's body was not. In front of Rav Kahana, and this was a Chalamoy, presumably. Amar Apapi, Rav Papi answered that's Yom Shemua Havi Uvich of Dami. It was the day that Rav Kahana just heard about. Maybe there was a messenger that came that told Rav Kahana that Rav Zvid died. So that is considered as if the Talmud Chacham is present, although you don't see his body. But the day that they heard about it, that's when the day Rav Kahana made the hespid on Chalamoy for Rav Zvid. Amar Ula. Now, the Gemara mentions that Hespedim, it's a very big covered mess to make a Hespid. But not all the time did they make a Hespid. In other words, sometimes uh, they just made noises. Lahavdal, if you um, ever see it, like the Lahavdal, Lahavdal, but the way the Africans uh, make uh, these noises by a Levaya, by a, by, a, by a funeral. So the Gemara says like this Amaula, Hespid. Alev. Hesped means when it says hesped, you bang your heart. So if you do that by a, a, by a funeral, you're yoyt to the midst of hesped, even if nobody speaks. The ksiv, al shodayim soifchim. On your chest, you, you, you bang. Tipuach, sometimes people would do tipuach during a, a funeral. What does that mean? Biyad. 
That means they would bang their hands together. Kilus, when you sometimes see in the, uh, uh, an expression of kilus that they did by a funeral, beregel means that they were stamping their feet by Levaya. So it's not all about speeches. Sometimes it's about the noise, the sounds, the wailings. That's also part of the covet a mess. Tonera bonum. I don't think we do. Of course, we don't do that today, but that was at that time. Hamakalis, if you're doing the stamping of your feet, loyakalis besandal. Don't do the kilo stamping of your feet with the spiked uh, sandal, spiked. Elabiminal, use a shoe. Because it can be dangerous. If you're stamping your feet and somehow the sandal turns over, you may end up stamping your feet on the spiked part of the sandal, and that could lead to danger. Now the Gemara switches into Sometimes people do things that are socially off. Um, so the Gemara wants you to be aware that, that sometimes a person without, without knowledge, without you know, being aware of themselves, a person could be, uh, a person could be socially off at the Nicham Oval. So Amr Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Yochanan said, Hi, Alan, we're in the middle, of the, in the middle of the page. Okay, sure. Am Rabbi Yochanan. Rabbi Yochanan said, Ovel, uh, an Ovel, Kevin Shenina Roishai. If he shakes you his head that, you know, that he had enough of your Nichum, Shuv E Menachmim, Roshoyin Lishlesh Vesloi. The Menachmim are not supposed to sit there anymore. They're supposed to get up and go. They, they should use it as a, as a sign that the, the Ovel has had enough. He wants to be alone. He can't sit around there any longer. Va'am Rabbi Yochanan. And Rabbi Yochanan teaches us another din. Let's say the Rosh Hashiva walks in, so or the president or the Melech walks in to Menachem Oval someone. Everybody is to stand up if the Nasi walks in or the head of the court comes to Menachem Oval someone. Chutz, except Oval the Choyliv, someone's in Ovel, the Oval himself doesn't have to get up from his low chair and, and stand up, the Choyliv and the sick person. Because in Ovel, uh, the whole thing is because if the Nasi forgives him for not getting up because he understands he's in, in Tsar, so he has the exception. No, although everybody else is obligated to stand up if the Nasi walks in. Beyond Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Yochanan said, let's say everybody's standing. So now is another thing. You have to be careful what comes out of your mouth because it may sound wrong. So when everybody stood up for the Nasi and everybody's standing, like call Oymrim Loi Shvu, then you could tell everybody, oh, it's permitted. You go all, you should all sit down. You never tell an oval, go sit down. Because an oval, if you tell an oval, sit down, it's like uh, telling him the wrong thing. You're like telling him, stay in your, in your avelis. Uh, and it could come out very wrong. So you should not say that to the oval. You can motion to him with your hands, but not say the word sit down. Amrav Yehuda Amarav. Oval, the oval, the first day, and, and according to most opinions, the entire first day, also we forbid him to eat his own food from the refrigerator. Other people have to bring him the food. And the reason is because we're concerned that the oval in his agony is gonna not going to eat. And therefore, he's going he's gonna to put himself at risk. So we require friends to come over with food and to feed him and to make sure that he eats. Since the Torah, Hashem said to Yecheskel, who, who was supposed to be an oval, uh, Hashem said, you're exempt from being an oval. You should not have to eat the bread of other people. From here we can impl implies and deduce that every other oval is supposed to eat food from somebody else. Says the Gemara, Rab of Rabbi Yosef, Rab and Rabbi Yosef had, a, had a, a, an unspoken deal with each other, that when each one would sit Shiva, and Rab sat Shiva a lot of times, uh, maybe Rabbi Yosef also, in other words, they would switch their meals with each other. So when Rabbi became an oval, Rabbi Yosef would give him his supper, and when Rav Yosef became an Ava, Rabba would give him his supper. And that's not, that's not called like payback. Even though they had this implied agreement, it's still called like a free meal and you're yoytze the, the, the obligation of feeding somebody else. And it's not considered yours. Amar Rabbi Huda, Amar Rav. Rabbi Huda said in the name of Rav, if somebody died in a city, 
right? A small city. Nobody is allowed to go to work because the obligation to bury him is on the entire city. Says the Gemara, Rav Hamnuna, Rav Hamnuna ikla le Duramusa. He came to this place called Duramusa. Shma koil shipura de shachle. He heard the sound of the shofar uh, that uh, sounded like uh, that gave the message that somebody just died. So they used to have a shofar blow when somebody died. So, okay, so Rav Hamnuna is there in this place, Duramusa, and Chaza Hanach Anoshe of the Abidite, and he saw people going to work. Amalu, so he's so angry at them. How are you allowed to go to work? To work. All those people should be damned. In other words, they shouldn't, they should be in, in Khairam, excommunicated. We, you're not supposed to go to work when somebody dies in the city. So didn't somebody die in the city? Why is everybody going to work? Amarale, so they told Rav Hamnuna, they are groups of people. In other words, there are groups of people in each district which take care of somebody who's dying in that district. So somebody is already busy with the with the with the, with the deceased, and therefore, uh, when we don't all have to be concerned uh, that uh, that he's not going to get buried. So, wouldn't uh, someone of his stature? Shouldn't of someone of his stature given the benefit of the doubt instead of cursing and excommunicating? Oh, so maybe people maybe based well, we, on just what he saw without uh, first asking. Great question, but could be that at that time they did not have uh Hebra Kadishas. And most places were not like that. Uh, that you know, most places adhere to the rule that the entire city stopped working and uh, saw to it that this person was buried. Um, but maybe this was a new in, uh, a new program where they set up uh, Hevra Kadishas and he wasn't aware of it. Okay. So he said, now that you explained it to me, you're permitted, you're no more excommunicated. Now the Gemara says a fascinating thing uh, about you can't overdo it in your uh, in your crying. Someone who cries and is so in a difficult mood, because more than more than that, what is required, then you'll cry in another mace. For example, you decide to say, instead of sitting shiva of seven days, I'll sit ten days. So the Gemara says, you think you're doing a mitzvah, the opposite will happen. You're causing that you'll be sitting shiva for another relative. And the Gemara brings the story. There was this woman, she was in the neighborhood of Rav Huna. She was blessed with seven sons. One son died and she couldn't get over it. She overdid it and she was crying to such extremes. Shalach law, Rav Huna, Rav Huna sent her a message. Don't do that. Don't do that. Loy She paid no attention to Rav Huna and she continued uh, mourning over the loss of that one son. Shalach law. So Rav Huna got to leave it more severe and said, eat saites mutav. If you can listen to me, fine. Be loitzvis. If you're not going to listen to me, zavad zavdosa leidach mis. You should prepare tzvis zavdosa leidach mis. If you prepare the, the tachrichim, the shrouds for the next son that's going to die. So if you're not going to listen to me, this, something else is going to happen. And this woman was so stubborn and she kept crying for each child that died. Mr. Kuli, all seven sons died. La Shoif, in the end, Amala, Rav Huna said, Timosh Zavdosel Nafshech, prepare your own burial shrouds. Umis and she also died. So we see over there that uh, it's you can't over you can't overdo this. Al tifku lemeis val tenoidi loy. We darshan from this pasuk. Al tifku lemeis yoisumedai. Don't cry over a dead person more than enough. Val tenudi loy and don't shake your head. Yoisem mikashir more than the the required obligation to do so. Hakeitza. So what is the required obligation when someone passes on? Shloisha yamen lebchi. The first three days are excessive crying because the first three days when someone is nifter, somehow the soul doesn't realize that it's no more going back into the body. It tries to get back into the body and it and it can't. So the soul is hanging around very nearby. So you do excessive crying. Then the shiva, the rest of the seven days, the rest of the four days left, lehespid, you keep talking about stories about the person and eulogizing him. 
Ushloishim, and when you get up from Shiva, you have 30 days ligihuts, not to wear pressed clothing, ulisispires, and from taking a haircut. Mikan ve'elach, beyond 30 days, Amar HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Baruch Hu says, I ata rachmonim bo yosmen. You can't be more merciful, more than me. If I, if it's, I gave the soul into an individual, it's mine. And I'm coming to collect what I deposited into that body. So you cry because you, know, you have to understand that the soul will live on forever. And you have to understand that um, that you, you're crying because you might, like normal people who cry when they're, not, when they're parting ways with somebody and not going to see them for a long time. But it's also important that it's part of our belief that the soul lives on. And, uh, and uh, therefore, we, we don't make, uh, we, we're not supposed to cry to, to extreme, ex, uh, uh, in extreme manner and for a long period of time. I'm not sure if other religions have now. Some religions will go on and on and crying. And, and this is the reason the Torah said not to make tattoos on your body and, and, and tear your hair out when somebody dies. Same idea. So we darshan, there's a posik that says like that. That's part of that posik that we mentioned before. Cry, cry for lahoylech, somebody who's going. Omar Abi Yehuda, Beloy Bonham, somebody who did not have children. It's a, it's, it's, it's uh, somebody who passes on without children. Now it doesn't mean without, it means without children, physical children, or somebody who didn't uh, accomplish with his life what he wanted to accomplish because there are many great people who didn't have children, like Rav Meir Shapiro of the Tafyomi or Chazanish, or the Panovich of many people didn't have children. But, but for somebody who, who leaves this world without children, that's a very extreme form of tragic. Rabbi Shua Belevi la Ozula Bey Avla. Shua Belevi did not visit an Oval house. He rather learned. El Alman da Ozul Beloy Bonin. Somebody who kept who left the world without leaving behind children. Rav Huna Ama. Rav Huna says that that posik, Ki Loyoshiv Oid, is referring to a person. Bochoy Bochoy. Zesha over Avera refers to a person that did a sin, Vishonabo, and did it twice, a few times. Now it's become part of his psyche. So, uh, and therefore, Rav Huna Latame, the Omar of Huna, Rav Huna has this saying, Kevin Shaodam Alva Avera Vishonabo, a person does an Avera and repeats it, Hutruloi. It's permitted for him to do the Avera. What do you mean? Hutruloi Sakadaychtich, it becomes permitted for him. I mean, once you do an Avera, it doesn't become permitted. In his psych psyche, it becomes permissible because he doesn't feel guilty anymore. Um, that's why it's important that right after the first Avera or the first time to try to do as, as quickly as Tshuva, because if he happens again, that should be the first time, because if you do two in a row, then you're not going to be, you're going to have a harder time uh, doing Tshuva uh, because it becomes part of your habit. Amr Ablevi, Ablevi said, the first day, three days that a person uh, passes on, the mourner himself, as if there's a sword on his neck. In other words, that if someone loses Loyalena and sitting Shiva, it's not just, oh, that's a one time, it's, it's one person. There's a good chance that something else is going to happen. And you know how bad thing comes in groups. So there's a good thing, it's a big chance that something else is going to happen. So he has to be, he has to, uh, the oval sitting there, he has to imagine that there's an, a sword right on his shoulder ready to chop his head off uh, because potentially something bad can happen. Mm -hmm. It gets easier. Um, uh, it, we should uh, consider as if the sword is in the corner. It's not, it's there, but not, you know, close up. After the, sh the Shiva and probably after 30, it's as if the sword is somewhere, you passed it in the street. So you don't, it's, you're not in such danger. But right away when the Shiva happens, the rest of the family is in danger. And I can tell you from uh, Loyalenu experience that when my father-in-law Loyalenu passed on, not too long after that, I, I lost a, uh, a baby. So, so, but Baruch Hashem, Hashem blessed me with, with children after that. But there's something to be said about things happening in groups. 
We never put a woman out there and make a a a in, into the main thoroughfare, make the levaya of a woman in the street. Why? And that was a big honor to have a, a woman uh, to have a levaya where more people can attend. Why not? Amr Nehardai, Loy Shonid, this is not taught. We go to the Daf Chavtches, Elachaya, a woman that, that just gave birth. And therefore, we are afraid that during the Levaya, during the funeral, she's going to uh, leak blood. And therefore, it's, she's going to look messy and it's, gonna, it's not, a, it's not uh, appropriate. Avashar Narshim Anichem, other women, you could you could actually make a public levaya in the rechay That was the that was the if it was a special woman, they made the levaya in the like the public park, uh, so more people could attend. Rab Loza, I met Rab Loza says afila shaar nashim. No, even other women should not have this public levaya uh, uh, like like a man, but should have more of a private funeral. Tixiv, because the Pasik says, but Thomas Shom Miriam, Miriam passed, but Sham, she was buried right there. So we it was like a remez. Samach Lemisa, right, right when she died, Kvura, they buried her. They didn't bring her out to make a big Leviah. So that's that's that. So it's two opinions if you should make a great big Leviah for even a woman that's very, very special. Viyama Rablaza. Rablaza said, Af Miriam Binashika Mesa. You should know. That Avram, Yitzchak, Yaakov, Moshe, Aaron d- died with this kiss of God. That they felt they, their souls left their body very easily and connected with the presence of God. So that's called a kiss. So the Gemara says that even Miriam merited to die on that high level that she was, so to speak, kissed by God. As Yisham, Sham, and Moshe. Because it's Exer Shava, Sham, Sham for Moshe. It says, Vatama Sham Miriam. And, and it also says, Moshe, Eved Hashem. So we learn just like Moshe died with a kiss, Miriam died being kissed by God. So then the question is, why doesn't the Torah say that Miriam died with the mouth of Hashem, so to speak, that God kissed her? It's a little bit uh, off color to say that the Shechina, which is usually in, in a man form, kissed uh, uh, Miriam. The woman. So therefore, the Torah only hints it with Exeir Shava. Amr Rabami Rabami said, Loma Nismecha Misas Miriam, Leparshas Paravaduma. Why is the, the story about Miriam next to the story of Paraduma, right? And Parshas Chukas is Paraduma, the Parsha before. Um, the Bahalaischa talks, uh, 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 talks about Miriam dying. Uh, and so, so why does, why does, the, the, why does uh, Miriam's death precede it? It teaches you ma para aduma machaperis, just like the para aduma brought about uh, kapara on the maise eagle, forgiveness, atonement on the maise eagle, and and it was it was the only type of carbon that that is a brought within the keva that brought, brings about atonement. Af misasin shel tzadikim a misa of a tzadik, even a woman who's a tzadik mechaperis brings about atonement for the entire generation. Ama and, and so the, that Rab Ami seemed to say is that just like the Paraduma brought an atonement on a virus, so also when a tzaddik dies, it brings a, a kapara for, for the generation on a virus that deal between man and God. So Amr Rab Lazar, Rab Lazar wants to add on something like that. He said, Loma nismecha misas aron le big dekuna. Why is the, 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 the sukim that describes a haran death mention that uh, right next to that the uh, Harad took off his clothing, the big day quota. There's extra words in that Pasuk that juxtaposes the clothing of a Kahanim, the, the, which is this week's Parsha, all the, the clothing of the Kahanim, to the death of a Harad. So it teaches you, ma big day the clothing of the Kahanim brought Kapora. Like, for example, uh, the Choshim brought Kapora that had to do with Choshim Mishpat, or the Me'il brought Kapara on Lashon Hara that sits on Azaz Ponim. So it, it brought Kapara on a virus, Ben Odom Lechaveri. So when the Kayan wore that, it sort of brought about atonement to the Jewish people. Af Misos and Shel Tzadikim, the death of Tzadikim, Mechaperes brings about atonement to the Jewish people 
not only for Averis being Adam Lamokim, but also it could bring a, a, an atonement, a death of a tzaddik brings atonement for the people with uh, Averis being Adam Lachaverim. Now the Gemara switches gears and says, what is a good way to die? If you think about it. Torah Bonam, Meis Pisoin, and that, therefore you're supposed to pray for a good death. That's the point. You have to pray that you die an, an, a good death. So what is called a good death? So the Gemara says like this, Meis Pisoin, if you suddenly die, Zuhi Misas Chatufa, that's a Misa that you grabbed away. They don't even give you, give you time to get your affairs in order. Yoim Echad, Umes, if you 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 were sick for one day and then you die, zuhi de misa de chufa. That is called a rushed death. That's also not a good death. Rab Chanina ben Gamliel oima zuhi misas ka magefa. That's called a death by plague. Shenema ben Adam hini nekoyach mimcha as machmen einecha be magefa. By Yecheskel, Hashem said that I'm going to make you an oval. And I'm taking from you your wife, which is Mahmad Enech, a nice way to look at your wife, the desire of your eyes, be ma gefa, in a plague. Oh, so it's it's a it's a plague. Uksiv, uh, uksiv, so that was one day. Uksiv but Thomas Ishti And the morning I was speaking to the people, and my wife died at night. So we see uh, if you only have one day and then you die, that's called a misa magefa, death by plague. If you were got two days of sickness and then you died, that's called a, a, a pushed away Misa, that they're trying to get rid of you quickly. Gimel, Ga'ara, and Abba, Nazifa. You know, Gimel is this, they're hollering you, get out of the way. Abba, if you have four days for your death, but prior to your death, Nazifa means they, 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 they want to have nothing to do with you. In other words, all these things are that if you are given less than five days to of sickness before you die, that's not a good way to die. But Hamisha, if you die and you had five days of, de- of sickness and then you died, Zihi misses Kol Adam. That's the nice death uh, that you, you want because that gives you enough time to prepare and get your affairs in order and com- command your families and things like that. Am Rab Khanan, Rab Khanan said, Micra, what do you see it in the Chumash? So Moshe Rabbeinu was told, Hein Karvu Yamechalamus. Hashem told Moshe, Behold, your days are getting close for you to die. Hein is Chad, you mean you have one day to prepare. Karvu is plural, is Tre, you have two days. So two plus one is three. Yamecha, your days, is Tre, another two. So two plus two plus one is five. Al he uh, Moshe, so to speak, had five. Even though Moshe wasn't really sick, but Hakadosh Baruch Hu said that they are, you're at least going to have five days before you die. Hein Chad, Hein. What does the word Hein mean? One. She came Bilshon Yavani in Greek. Karin Laachas Hein. It was an old Hebrew word that became part of the Greek language. Hein. So Hein means one in Greek. So now the Gemara talks about okay. That was how you die, but what age? So, if you die between 50 and 60, then that's called Karas. But the Gemara doesn't want to say that because the Gemara says, if you die at 52, that's the age that Shmuel died, even though you would think that Shmuel got Karas, but the, the truth is it wasn't. Shmuel was supposed to live longer, but he did not. He requested paid basically to die young because he did not want to die before Shoal HaMelech died. Uh, you have to read Tanakh. Uh, there are, by the way, Kares, there are 36 uh, Averos in the Torah, 36 Averos that you get, a person gets Kares. But that's not to be confused with Misa B'day Shemayim. Misa B'day Shemayim is also between 50 and 60, but just you die, not your children. Kares is not, if not only you die between 50 and 60, but your children also die between 50 and 60, that's called Kares. And then if you die over 60, this is, as a Gersa here, if you die over 60, Zu Misa B'day Shomayim, that's not what I'm referring to, Misa B'day Shomayim, that's, it's, that's called Misa's Kol Odom. That's the normal way to die is over 60. I mean, the time the Gemara was written. Oma Mazutra, Micra, why do you where do you see the Pasuk that says 60 is the good day, is a good year to uh, pass? The Ksiv, but Eli cover. 
let me go with Kelach to the to the grave. The Kelach bigimatria shitnhava. If to, to take the numerical value of the word Kelach, that is sixty. So base chaf lamed ches is is sixty. Shivim, if you make it to seventy, seva is very is old. Shmoina gevuras, if you make it to eighty, wow, God gave you extra power. Tixiv, it says in the pasuk, Yimeshin is saying about shivim shana. If uh, if you make it to eighty, then you, God's giving you extra power. And Baruch Hashem, th- th- we live in a time where the average age just can, can live beyond that. Amazing, but what this Gemara says. I'm going to send out like a little video clip. My wife, uh, my wife is, was on a training today for social work, and they said a, sent her a nice clip about living, uh, you know, living old past eighty five, and uh, and relationships. I'll just send it out. I thought it was moving. Anyway, Amar Rabba. Rabba said, if you live from 50 to 60 years old, Zihi misses Karis. That's Karis. Why didn't we say the word 50 to 60? Why do we say over 50 is Karis? Uh, because of the honor of Shmuel Ramasi, who died at age uh, 52, we don't want to say that, uh, you know, that uh, 52 is Karis. Rav Yosef, the Gemara says, he made a birthday party. When he returned 60, he made a birthday party for all the rabbis. Omar, he said, I'm no more can be uh, taking my life because of Karis. Omar Abaya, Abaya said, In other words, true, you reached over 60, but you could still die suddenly. So it's, you're not out of the woods yet. Um, as we learned before, if you die suddenly, you don't have five days to prepare, that's no good. So at least halfway I'm correct, that at least I made it past 60, I'm just going to celebrate my 60th birthday. The Gemara says, Rav Huna suddenly died. Suddenly, not with no, no warning. The rabbis were concerned. Maybe he did something wrong. We learned that if you die suddenly, it's not a good thing. There's some group of of Tamid Chachamim from the Mid-Hadayev taught If you didn't make it to 80, then if you die suddenly, that's bad. But if you made it to Gvurais, you made it to 80 years old, then that's okay if you die suddenly. That's called a kiss of God. And that's Ravuna was over 80 when he passed on. Now the Gemara says, what's the story of life? Omar Rava, Rava says, Chaye, how long you're going to live? Bone, how long, how many children you'll have? Umezoine and food. Loibus chus Italian is it has nothing to do with your merits. No matter how much mitzvahs you have, it's predetermined. Alaba mazol Italian is it. God determines it with the with the with the stars that you were born under. Your mazel, and and you can't really try to change that. Uh, although with with heavy tefillah you could, but the purpose of your mazel is because God needs you to on a mission in this life situation that He set you up in. The, the Gemara says like this: I'll prove it to you. The Rabba Rav Chizda, Rabba Rav Chizda were both equal Amaroyim. Tervayi Rabban Sadiqah Havi, they were both righteous people. Mar Matzlev Asimitru, Mar Matzlev Asimitru. Rabba would pray, rain would come. Rav Chizda would pray, rain would come. And yet they had such different life, life, life uh, events. Rav Chizda lived to 92 years old. Rabba lived only 40 years old. The house of Rav Chizda was so wealthy. The, uh, the, Rav Chizda was so lucky he had 60 weddings between his Eneklach and, 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 and Ir Eneklach. In the house of Rabba, he had 60 uh, Avelis situations. His grand, his children died, and his grandchildren died. They had the finest flower, and nobody was They had the finest flower, and nobody was nervous. They would give uh, um, barley bread for humans, which is normally eaten by animals. They didn't even have that. In other words, Rav Chizda was very rich. He went from a rags to riches story, and Rabba was always poor. So the Gemara, the Rava. Rava said, although there's no mazel, I, I, I tried to change my mazel. Hani tlas mili boye kamishmai. I prayed for God for the following things. Tarte yahavali, chadolo yahavali. Two they gave me, one they did not give me. 
In other words, I prayed for Chuchmose the Ravuna. I prayed for the wisdom of Ravuna and, uh, and, and be able to spread Torah like Ravuna. The Ois Raid Rav Chizda. And I wanted the wealth of Rav Chizda. I want to go from rags to riches like Rav Chizda. The Yahavulay, because I prayed so hard, even though it wasn't in my mazel, it worked. But Avasonuse the Rabba Baravuna, I wanted to have the humility of Rabba Baravuna. Lo Yahavuli, they didn't give it to me because uh, for some reason my prayer was not answered to have that kind of humility. Now the Gemara talks about the uh, death stories, and that will take us to the end of the page. Rav Soirim Achu de Rava. Rav Soirim was the brother of Rava. Have Yasuf Kamei de Rava. He was in front of Rava. Chazei de Have Komenamnei. Rav Rava was on his deathbed. He looked like he was sleeping. That's a nice way of saying that he was, uh, you know, half in the next world. Amalei Lei Melon Man de Lloyd Sarlan. So Rava said with his last strength to his brother Rav Soirim, "Tell the Malach Hamavas, the angel of death." To, to, to not cause me too much pain when I die. Amalei, so Rav Soirin told Rava, Ma lav aren't you friends with the Malach HaMavas? I mean, you're, you're such a great Madrega, you could tell him yourself. Amalei, so Rava said, Kivin di Masa Mazle lo yashkachbi. Since my, you know, my protective Malach left me, my protective angel left me, he, the Malach HaMavas will not listen to me. So, so Rav Shoirim said, I'll tell the Malach HaMavis not to go so hard on you, not to give you pain. But one condition, I want you to come to me after you die in a dream. So after Rav died, he appeared to his brother in a dream. So his brother Rav Shoirim asked Rav, did you have pain when you died? It was like a prick with a, with a, a poking needle. In other words, I had pain, but not a lot. Rava, th- 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 this story happened before. Rava, when he was healthy, he was sitting in front of Rav Nachman, and Rav Nachman was on his deathbed. He was, he was, he was in the throes of death. So Rav Nachman said to Rava, tell the, tell the, the Malachamavis not to cause me any pain. Amalei, so Rav said to Rav Nachman, Ma'alav Odom Chashivu, aren't you somebody special? So the, you'll, he's not going to give you a lot of pain when you leave, when you leave the world. Amalei, so Rav Nachman said, Man Chashiv, Man Sfin, Man Rekia. Who could be uh, strong and who is so important that the Malach HaMavis cares about not to cause that person pain? It's impossible. At that moment, nobody is more powerful than the angel of death. Okay, so Rav said, I'll tell him to go easy on you. But one condition, come back to me in a dream. So after Rav Nachman passed on, he came to Rav in a dream. He appeared to him. So Rav said to Rav Nachman, did you have any pain when you died? It was like taking a hair out of a glass of milk. They didn't have any pain. They took my soul, but I didn't feel the, the pain of the soul leaving the body. The Amali HaKadosh Baruch if God would tell me, Zulba Hu Alma Kan Havis, you want to go back to this world again? Loi I would never want to go back to this world. The Nafesh Bi Asuse, the fright of the Malach is, is is too much for me to bear, even though I didn't have a lot of pain when I died, but the, the sight of the angel of death was too much. Rav Loza the Gemara says, Truma. He was eating Truma. He was eating truma. Is chazele. So the Malach HaMavis appeared to, to wanted to take his life. He was eating truma. But if you kill him, Amalei, so Rabbi Loza told the angel of death, truma kar ka v'lav kaidish ikru. Isn't, um, you see I'm eating truma. If you're going to make me die right now, I'm going to be metama the truma. And you don't want to do that. So let me first finish eating my food and then you can take me. Chalfalei shat, the time that the Malach HaMavis had to take his life passed, and then, therefore, Ablazo was able to push off the angel of death and live long, long uh, many years after that story. Rav Shreshis is Chazalei Beshuka. Rav Shreshis saw the Malach HaMavis in the street. And in Malach HaMavis wanted to take his life. Amalei Beshuka, Kabahema, you want to take my life in the street like an animal? Isa Lagabe Besa, come to my house. Uh, so I guess maybe by the time he got to his house, the Malach HaMavis left him alone. Rav Ashi, 
is Chazalei Beshuka. Rav Ashi saw the angel of death in the street. Amalei, so he had a conversation with the angel of death, and he said, Israchli Tlosin Yomi, I want you to give me at least 30 days more to live, but Ahadre Letami Dai, I want to review my learning. The Amrisi, because we have a, a teaching, Ashri Mi Shibola Kama Talmudai Biyane. It's fortunate if a person is able to have his learning clear as if it's it's lying in his hand. So I want to review my learning before I die. Biyayim Tlasa Asa, on the day of the 30th day, the Malach HaMavis returned. Amalei, Maiku Lahai. So Ravashi said, why are you coming so early? Uh, I, I still have the 30th day. We said 30 days plus. So he said, I have to come today. Could the Chaka Ragli Bar Nosen. Rav Huna Bar is supposed to take over the position today. One rulership cannot touch the other rulership, even a hair's breadth. In other words, you're not supposed to be the chief rabbi anymore. Rav Huna is supposed to take on Rav Huna Bar Nosen, And therefore, I must take you right there to, in 30th day in the morning. So that's what the Gemara says about Rav Ashi, the great Rav Ashi, the, the, the author, basically, of the Talmud that we're learning. Then the Gemara concludes, Rav Chizda, the, the Rav Chizda, Lai Havi Yochale. Rav Chizda, the Malach HaMovis couldn't get to him. He never stopped learning, so the Malach HaMovis has no um, power over him. So Solik Yosele Lai Ba'arza Devi Rav, he stood on a cedar uh, uh, in the in the in the shul, a big cedar word that that was a, like a pole or something like that. Paka Aza made a, he busted the whole cedar pole, Ushasek, and for that moment, Rav Chizda stopped learning the Yochale, and that gave the advantage to the angel of death to take Rav Chizda. Rav Chia loy have a matzudim karvale. The to Rav Chia, the Malchamovas could not even get close to him. Yoy Mechad one day. The Malach HaMavis was so frustrated, he tried to take Rav Chia's life, and Rav Chia didn't let. So the, he, he appeared, he made, Malach HaMavis made himself look like a poor per- person. Asaf Taraf Abava, he knocked on the door of Rav Chia's house. Amale, he told Rav Chia, I'm a poor person, apekli rifta, please give me some bread. Apikule, so the Malach HaMavis gave him bread. Amale, so he said, V'lav ko meracha mar a'anya, didn't you have... Um, didn't you have uh, mercy on a poor person? Why don't you have mercy on me? I'm the Malach I'm I have a duty to take your life, and you don't allow me to take your life. You have mercy on the poor person. Have mercy on me. I'm supposed to do my job. I'm taking your life. The Malach uncovered himself and showed him a stick made of fire, so to speak, a strap made of fire. And therefore, Amtzilei Nafshei, so Rav Chia allowed himself to be taken. He allowed his soul to leave his body. So th- this is how the Gemara describes how the great Amaroim dealt with the angel of death. Uh, again, I don't, you know, in our time, I don't think the Malach uh, will be pushed off if you're wearing a mask. But we just learning Atim Hatvekim Bashem Alakechem Chaim Kilchem Ayayim Bez Hashem tomorrow will finish the Masachta. Yeah, amen. Thank you. Baruch, quick question. You mentioned that the Chofetz Chaim liked the Daven alone, not to get distracted with the right. sounds. Yes. And, and you also mentioned to me once that in Poland, in the small towns, they didn't have a minion, they Daven by themselves. And, uh, right, right. Right. Obviously. I mean, uh, uh, they couldn't, uh, they didn't always have a minion. Right. 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 And Rabbi, the, the, the one that wrote that was the Chafetz Chaim's son. Oh, right, they, right, right, right. The Chafetz Chaim wrote a biography and he said, I'm with my father in the in the attic. And he felt that we shouldn't daven with a minion because we'll lose our focus. We daven better at home. He, but Rosh Chodesh, he went to the, and the school was down the block. This was we're the son said we're, about the father. The son said we're not all the Chafetz Chaim. So. Right, right, right. But the uh, idea is that sometimes you're so involved in something that by going uh, to the minion, you won't have in good and you, you're going to break your learning that you were doing. Right. So, so mm-hmm. some people uh, will, will. So it was the Chafetz Chaim that liked the Daven alone, the, the son said. The, the, well, that's yeah. the, the son said while yeah. he was 28 while years, they were writing the Chaf, the Mishnah Bura. Yeah. Understood. Yeah. All right. Oh, All man. right. I'm sending out a video, a cute video, a, not a cute, but a, a, a nice moving video regarding. I the, told I told you a joke about slapping the the the, the hand at KJ. Everybody loved it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but the more is that we're learning. Okay. <laughs>
Shikaya Thank you. Okay, bye, good night, everybody. Bye, good night.